Yeah, and, and I think you know when it comes to implementation, right? Depending on what level you are in your organization, you either need more of this framework or you need more of the checklist of controls. And so, you know, if I'm the IT director or I'm in charge of the cybersecurity program for this organization, I'm probably going to use the framework and then I'm going to link it to different controls, whether they're from RMF, whether they're from ISO, whether they're from ISACA, whatever it is. And now I'm going to take those and say, hey team, these are the controls and these are the things I need you to do every single day in your job or every single month. And then we're going to assess that as we go through. Now every year, I'm going to go and look at my framework again and say, what has changed? What hasn't? What do I need to add? What do I need to take away based on the outcomes I'm trying to achieve? But by doing that translation from these more generic outcomes into controls, that does make it easier for more entry level or junior folks on the team to be able to do their job. Because you know, as Kip said, if I go and say, you, know, you must have a secure credit card processing system, that is a very generic statement. There's a million different ways to do that. And that person on the front line, that, that entry level technician, isn't going to know how to do that. So if I then say, that means you must have these five things like TLS 1.3, you must do a quarterly assessment, you must do X, Y, and Z, and I give them that checklist, it's easier for them to validate. So there is a place for both, and using NIST doesn't mean you can't use RMF or ISO 27001 or ISACA. All those things work with it. In fact, right. as you go through and look at the NIST framework, it actually has, in those uh, different outcomes, it has a reference column that actually tells you which controls are associated with those outcomes if you want to use those as a reference. Yeah, that, that's absolutely the case. Um, the only th thing, the only issue that I find these days using uh, version 1.1 of the cybersecurity framework is that some of those informative references that you find in there are actually outdated. And so just be aware of that if you decide to, to use those. But it's very powerful, right? So if you're in the healthcare industry, well, that's actually part of critical infrastructure. And you probably uh, have HIPAA that you've got to deal with, and maybe you take credit cards. Well, here's the thing. Instead of uh, wrestling with HIPAA and PCI DSS as two separate uh, you know, things that you've got to deal with by using the framework, you can actually uh, pull all those together and you can actually implement controls that will simultaneously show that you're practicing reasonable cybersecurity from an FTC perspective and that you're compliant with your PCI DSS and that you're compliant with your HIPAA all through one, one single control or maybe just like a small uh, handful of controls and it can really simplify your environment, save you money, and really decrease the chance that you're going to have a nasty incident. So 